Good morning and welcome to the Marketing That Grows Your Business show. As you're coming in, just give me a shout out. Where are you today? Um, today we're going to be talking about like, it's a hot topic right now. I don't know if, you know, you've heard it or, you know, you feel in it. Like everybody's talking about, oh, we're in recession. And, um, you know, some are like, no, no, we're not in recession. And others are like, yes, we are, uh, at least here in the U.S. So there's just been a lot of talk about, you know, what do you do? How do you prepare? Um, and, you know, what are some smart strategies if your business, if if we do uh, and are uh, in a uh, in a recession, what does it look like to thrive in that uh, time or that era in time? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we have our special guest. Um, I'm going to see if this camera is a little, there we go. Gets a little blurry every once in a while. It loses its focus. So um, if, you know, and then I think this is a good conversation for us to have regardless because, you know, things happen in business and, you know, being prepared, uh, whether it's recession or something else, you know, setting uh, ourselves up for success just is a smart move. So that's, our, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, real quick, um, just want to, again, welcome everybody. Um, we do giveaways on all of the shows all the time. Uh, today is no different. Uh, today we're going to be giving away and choosing two winners for how to hire your first team member, even if you have no clue how to get started. So this is a course I put together. Um, and uh, like I say, two winners. If you are the person that knows you need some help, but well, not quite sure how to get it, this is going to be super valuable for you. Um, so how do you win? Like we have three ways that you can win um, the giveaway today. And we draw our winners at the end of the Today Show. Um, and if you are on other socials, I will say this, that um, we feel free to follow along with the the ways to win. Um, so share your aha moments in the comments. So an aha moment is like, wow, I didn't know that. You may hear some of those things today. Uh, you'll be like, I didn't know that. I needed to know that. Sometimes, let's just be real. Sometimes we hear things that we knew, but we needed to hear them again. Hashtag aha, drop that down under and that will enter you into the wheel of wow. Um, Second way, tag somebody in the comments or share it out. Sprinkle it out to use my word, my friend uh, Molly's word. She uses the word sprinkle and it's just caught on. <laughs> sprinkle it out. Uh, let's share this with other people. If you know business owners that are worried or struggling, um, you know, right now, um, let's bring them on in, invite them in. And then we love questions, y'all. So that's a third way that you can win. Um, so don't forget, though, just aha moments, drop them in the, the comment area. You know, Facebook doesn't like us to say those words, but uh, anyway. Also, if you do not want to stress over taking notes, and I don't want you to stress over taking notes, I want you to just be able to focus. We do show notes every week, so all you have to do is drop in notes down under, and we'll make sure you get them. Now, I will say, this is what I was trying to say earlier, I got ahead of myself, um, this only works on Facebook. Sorry, you guys. So if you are on LinkedIn or if you're on YouTube, um, we're going to drop in the link so you can come back over to Facebook. I'm sorry uh, to make you do that, but um, that's the only way the notes feature works. You know, the other platforms don't have that automated messenger thing that we do to get the notes to you. Um, so just letting you know that. Now, all that's kind of all the housekeeping stuff. I want to say hey to a couple. Looks Hassan, welcome. I hope I said that correctly. Welcome. I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about my special guest today. So my special guest is uh, a friend. He's We're in a mastermind together, and you guys are going to love him. He's got a wicked sense of humor. <laughs> but let me tell you a little bit more about like who he is and what he does and how he helps others. He helps brands create more awareness and scale using his proven marketing and business strategies. Um, before creating magic for other brands, he launched several successful businesses that focus on helping clients grow their businesses. Absolutely. My kind of guy. 
Jason hosts top ranked podcast, uh, per the top ranked um, podcast called Perfectly Mentored, where he interviews like seriously guys, big, big names like Gary Vaynerchuk, Randy Zuckerberg, Damon John, Grant Cardone, Rebecca Minkoff, and many more. I mean, seriously, you if you are you know, um, want to learn from like seriously big names, then you need to check out Jason's podcast because he's got huge, huge names <laughs> that he interviews. Um, he has also been featured on radio and magazines and newspapers as a social media marketing and entrepreneurial thought leader. He's a regular contributor for Entrepreneurial Magazine, Addicted to Success, Thrive Global, and The Good Men Project. So y'all, he's a little bit of a big deal, I'm just saying. And I'm super excited that he said yes to joining us today. So you guys put your hands together for Jason. Jason. Okay. Well, I, so I'm gonna start, um, I'm gonna start off by saying I host I like I have a QA show that goes live every single week. The production value on this makes me like I just want to quit. I just want to stop doing what I'm doing because this is incredible. What, what, well, what? if you would like me to help you with that, no. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, absolutely happy to do that. So um curious like i always like to lead with like kind of like a little bit of your backstory because you know how did you get here like you know getting started in the online space is one thing but like what does that look like like in a you know two to three minute span i know it's shoving a lot obviously our stories are pretty big but like what does your story look like to your journey to get you where you are right now yeah uh, re real quick um like a lot of people who, who, who get into business. I was confused, didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I graduated in poli sci, got into law school twice, thought that was the route I was going to go, got an early admission, declined it. Um, school just wasn't my thing. Um, and I just, I, I was lost, didn't know what I wanted to do. So I took a job. I knew I wanted to go and I knew I wanted to like, the problem was I wanted to be a lawyer, but I wanted to be like the lawyers on TV. I didn't want to do the work to get to become the lawyer on TV. And I thought like, hey, I could just be like one of those fancy litigators. Um, realized that I'd have to go to school for a lot more and then I'd have to work my butt off for someone else in order to do that. Uh, just didn't make sense. So lost, confused. After I graduated, I took a, my first job. I worked for a recruiting company. I was doing business development. So uh, recruiters find people jobs, um, you know, businesses to, to go work in. I find the businesses that will hire us to let them find the candidates for the job. So did that, uh, had a really good, uh, person next to me who was really good in sales, learned a lot from, learned a lot from him. But then I started seeing my paycheck compared to what was put on the board. Cause it was like one of those like boiler room type offices where it's everyone's numbers were put on the board in order to, in order to push you. And I looked at my paycheck, I looked at the board and I, I realized something was off. And, I, and then I looked behind me and my boss was watching a movie on his computer in his office and something just shook me the wrong way. At that point, you know, I started having these ideas for a t-shirt for, for our local hockey team, uh, a funny t-shirt that I heard someone say. I was like, this is cool. Literally went to bed, had a dream that I owned a clothing store uh, that featured like all crazy sports t-shirts. And I said, cool, that's what I'm going to do. So not knowing anything, I quit my job. Uh, probably not the best. Uh, my plan, I wouldn't advise people to follow this plan. I think you could have done some more uh, some more thinking to it. Quit my job, went to go start a clothing business. Uh, didn't know anything about online businesses or websites or anything like that. Failed miserably right out of the gate. Spent a lot of money um, and then uh, had to go take another job. But halfway through, I was like, all right, I half-assed it. What if I give it a real shot? Went to give it a real shot, grew that brand into over uh, this, you know, the brand was sold in over 250 stores across North America, uh, read uh, Crush It by Gary V. And then I was reading a book called uh, The Power Within or The Brand Within by Damon John, where he said he liked helping young entrepreneurs. I wrote to him. Uh, long story short, very, very, I'm a very persistent person. Uh, got a meeting with, with Damon. He mentored me. I grew that brand. I was in over 250 stores across North America. At the time, I was building a relationship with the head of team, Gary V. And uh, the head of team, Gary V, a guy named Andy Cranach, told me, Gary's very bullish on this thing called Facebook ads. Started playing around with it. Um, long story short, uh, for many reasons, we could go into that if you'd like. But I was very unhappy in the clothing business. I was uh, miserable. My wife saw that I was miserable. But at the same time, 
because I was able to grow the brand, I started getting a lot of consulting offers from different people saying, hey, do you want to go for lunch? You want to chat? Can you chat with me? See what you're doing with your brand? Can you help me? Um, and I love that. And I loved helping people build their brands. Facebook ads were becoming a big thing. I was like, cool, maybe I could charge for this. Um, and I took on a client on the side and I took them from $2,500 a month in sales to $300,000 a month. And I was, that's when I was realized, all right, I could help other people do this too. Left the clothing brand, started an agency and, uh, and then been doing that for, for the last five years, had the agency, uh, and then launched a coaching program around a, a year ago where I, I teach people, you know, pretty much how to build their businesses. That's a long story short. No, that is amazing. So first, let's focus on something important that I did not know we had in common. Okay. Hockey. Hmm. Seriously? Like, do you I'm, play? I'm, I'm, I'm from Montreal. So we're, so okay. like, we're, 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 okay. we're Canadian. I mean, this, this? this is like, like, you see, like, these are like the 80s Stanley Cup winner. Actually, like, okay. Patrick Wall, like, these are all the 80s. Like, this is like one of the best tickets to one of the best games that I've ever been to. Like, yeah. So that is so, so amazing because my, um, uh, I didn't learn to skate at all until I was an adult. So mm -hmm. I didn't live in Canada where like, it's a, like a, you know, it's the national uh, pastime. Um, but my boys actually, my, Logan, um, uh, was just had turned five and I think Tyler was like nine when they started playing hockey and like, I mean, they're 27 and 31 now. So, and they still play in the main, Logan went all the way through college playing, um, you know, national championships, all kinds of good stuff. I pl and I was the cool mom because I did stick and puck, you know, mm -hmm. with them. Uh, I can only stop one direction, but hey. <laughs> That's awesome. It's fun. Uh, so I didn't know that. So that, wow, that's exciting. No, but the, the important that, so I just wanted to say that real quick, but the important uh, thing that I want everybody, you probably heard it, but I just, I love like pulling out the power in other people's stories. Um, the two, there were several big things that I got from what you said. One, you know, you failed. Like we do, we, we fall down uh, sometimes, usually, um, through in that startup phase, like, you know, when you're like, okay, I'm trying to figure this stuff out. But the reality is uh, failure is a common thing, really, for un most entrepreneurs. It comes in various sizes and shapes, but, you know, we learn from it and you figured it out. But the other thing that I thought was powerful is, is you realize, hey, this was no longer serving me. I don't like doing this and I can pivot. I can do something different. That's powerful. So, you know, if you've got a business that's not working for you or, you know, you just don't love it anymore, it's okay to do something different. I'm just saying, you know, Jason's a great example of, you know, just deciding, hey, something that's super successful, you let it go and did something totally new. And now you love what you're doing, which is a very powerful um, part of your story. So, so let's just switch gears a little bit because there's, I think there's some um, things that you probably learned that's going to be powerful in this conversation just by, by the fact that you have pivoted. But what is a recession proof business anyway? I mean, you know, I, I was looking at some um, articles earlier and just doing a little research on this and you know, um, most of everybody is like, oh, well, this is the type of business you need if you want a recession proof business. But like, what is a recession proof business? Anywho? Yeah, I, look, I think some businesses have have more difficult times. So like COVID, for example, uh, when COVID started, restaurant businesses, it doesn't matter what marketing techniques or what business fundamentals you have, they got hit. Uh, travel got hit, right? Doesn't matter what marketing. I mean, I guess restaurants could pivot because of the delivery process a little bit more, but travel, travel completely shut down. So it didn't really matter what you could come up with. So I want to, I want to put that into perspective, but a recession proof business is just one. It's, it's one that makes the right decisions before the recession happens. Uh, and, and that's the most important part. Every business big or small should have a recession proof plan. And that's not a, you know, best case, worst case scenario. It's a, uh, it's a, what's the worst case? How do we get out of it? And what's the plan? And then we put it away and hope we never have to use it. It's kind of like life insurance. And, and uh, if you're not using it as investment or, or, or insurance, even for your car, you, you know, you have it, you hope you never have to use it. And you know, you spent a lot of time doing it, but it's worth it. 
So I think that that's number one is if you're, if you're listening to this right now and you don't have a plan, the plan, like you should get started on that right away because I do believe the next couple of years are going to get a lot worse. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. I, I've met with people who told me that I am going to be wrong. I met with people who told me that I just don't realize how right I'm going to be. So I've heard both sides. Uh, and it's not one of those things where I hope I'm right. Uh, I, I really do hope I'm wrong. But, but. And, and, and here's a huge but and huge opportunity is I'm ready. And if it does go the way I'm thinking, then I have a huge opportunity to now expand the business. So what, I'm, what do I mean by that? Some of the biggest businesses in the world were born out of a recession or they thrive during a recession. Um, I was just listening to this uh, podcast all about, all about Rolex watches and how they became such a huge phenomenon. And in 2008, when the financial crisis happened and we went into that recession in 2008, Tag Heuer was like one of the top watch brands and everyone started pulling back advertising spend. Rolex had a new VP of marketing and they decided we're going to go all in on, on marketing. We're going to take advantage of this. We built up capital. We're fine. Let's, let's just, let's just go all in. Let's just land grab here. And they went all in and Rolex is Rolex now and Tag Heuer is Tag Heuer now, right? I think you, I think if you had to choose a brand that you'd want to be, I think you could figure out which one you'd want to be. So there's so many different businesses that get born out of recessions because they were smart enough to make the right decisions. Now, what I see a lot of businesses do is they cut marketing initially. Like that's the first thing. Now, if you're a big brand, I get why you have to do that. You can get a little bit more, um, you can get a little bit more, you know, trim the fat, I guess, if you're like a big Fortune 500 company. But if you're a small business, you need to do everything you can right now in order to make sure that you have enough cash reserves so that you can market and not cut advertising during a recession. Because the number one thing you need during a recession or during any downtime is more customers. In fact, I think the right system helps you become bulletproof regardless of what of what economy you're facing, good, bad. And that's if you have a proper way to get to generate awareness of people who know who you exist, proper way to do lead generation, proper way to make sure that your pricing is on point, proper way to get um, to, uh, you know, increase your conversion and a proper way to get your customers to come back and buy from you again. Those are five levers that you pull at any moment at any part of your business, no matter what the economy is, that's how you grow your business. That's how you get out there. And I think when a recession happens, everyone just dials back, dials back, dials back, dials back. I want to train you. If you're, if you're a business owner listening right now, think expansion, think about how cheap it's going to be. Why did brands boom during the COVID downturn? Is well, one, it was a unicorn moment. So everyone pulled off the advertising platforms. Let's drop the cost of advertising because advertising is com competition. If Kim and I are both marketing and we're both going after the same audience and we're both spending money, well, guess what? We're going to drive up each other's prices. But if Kim decides, all right, I'm done, I'm pulling out, I don't want to advertise anymore. Well, now advertising just got cheaper for me because I have no competition. I'm just all in. And the other side to that was attention was at an all time high because people were home. Uh, they weren't laid off. They were just home. Work was shut down. So they were put on these platforms. They were all the attention was now on these platforms. So that's how they were able to grow because attention high cost to hit those people low. That's a unicorn moment. I don't think we'll ever see that again, but we will have cheap advertising. But I do believe a lot of businesses are starting to realize, OK, wow, in a recession, I'm going to do it. But I, I, whether they could actually pull the trigger on that or not is, is a completely different thing. But my goal is to make sure that every business we work with is wearing like a Kevlar vest for their business that no matter what happens, they could go out sun shining. They could go out. It's, it's raining. No matter what period they're in, they're thriving. Yeah. And you said something that I think is super powerful and that I think a lot of people, uh, especially in COVID times or any, honestly, it doesn't matter. Uh, you nailed it. Um, anytime uh, there is uh, a fear factor, you know, around uh, whether or not you should be spending money in your business. Um, the, the reality is you probably should be and, and not pulling back. That's why I saw a lot of that during COVID uh, where businesses, I mean, business, I had, I had, uh, um, you know, clients, uh, you know, just pull their contracts because they're like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I've got to save money. I've got to hoard my money. Um, instead of, to your point, seeing it as an opportunity. Um, it, the the lead gen in particular, I think, is a huge problem for so many people. They don't know how to consistently have that lead um, coming in, much less during tough times. So 
when you when you're looking at this through the lens of somebody who needs a plan, like, hey, you know, I don't know what this looks like. I hear you, but like, what do I need to do? You know, what are some key components that you know somebody that's like, I, I I'm I know I need a plan. So what what's the plan? So what are some key things that they can do out the gate between to your point? If we are in a reception, which I'm with you, I do believe we we've got a problem here and it's going to get worse. Um, then what kind of things should they start putting in place now? One is look look at your look at your cash flows. I think that's the most important thing. I think everyone likes to talk about revenue. Everyone sits there and says, "Oh, we did seven million, or we did ten million. But revenue is a vanity metric, and I truly believe that because you could spend twenty million to make that seven million, and your business is <laughs> is going under. So revenue is a vanity metric. So I would look at cash flow, and most importantly, free cash flow, which means paying all your expenses, what's left over, not just the cash. So you could have $100,000 sitting in your bank account right now. But if your expenses are $98,000, and you know, you have to pay that over the next month, your free cash flow is really only 2000. So what's your free cash flow? Uh, so look at that, look at what happens worst case scenario, uh, you, you know, 80% of your clients pull out 80% of your customers stop, what what does that where does that leave you start playing that out? Uh, start looking at, you know, employees even, who who's valuable who's not valuable one of my one of my mentors and one of my one of my coaches used to tell me that every quarter go through your mind and fire your employees now mentally fire don't actually do it but mentally fire employees and then rehire them you should be doing that every single quarter so you could start figuring out okay is this person still bringing value to the business and they're not because sometimes we just get complacent and be like oh well they've been with us for 10 years but really they don't offer any value to the business anymore so i would one look at your free cash flow. What do you have left over and how long can you survive for? Then I would start looking at, okay, where can you cut costs? Now, I don't believe you could save your way into wealth and I don't believe you could save your way out of growth, uh, save your way into growth. The only way to keep increase growth is to increase revenue coming in. So look at, but I still think if you're going to take that money and you're going to put it in marketing, you should come from someplace. So look at where, where are you spending too much right now that you think you could dial back? So start thinking about a trim the fat type of thing. Okay, if we have to go lean, what would that look like? And maybe it's a great exercise for you to do anyways, because you start going, okay, where can automation hit in? Oh, we used to have three people do this, but now there's a new tool out there that lets us do this, this, this. Look, Kim started this the show with, hey, just comment below and an automated service will go out. That used to be a person. That used to be a person that had to go through notes, see who wrote notes and go send them something. You just eliminated a person. Um, now, doesn't mean you should fire that person. Maybe there's a better role for them, but you're eliminating tasks. So start thinking about how you could get lean and, and, and erase that operational drag. Then start thinking, okay, well, what are my customers going to need during this time period? Because if we're going to be down, they're going to be down too. What do they need? And how can I add that as a bolster on service to what I have right now? So, you know, if they're I'll give you an example. If, if production is going to slow down for them for whatever reason, okay, well, great. How can you help them get rid of the inventory they have right now that's not moving? All these different things. What what bolster on service can can, can you do for them? Um, and then and then I I mean then you just be prepared to advertise because you're going to need it and, and you're going to have to have a plan of okay, great. If I'm going to advertise, I'm going to land grab. I'm going to go get new customers coming in. Here's how much I'm going to need to spend. And then start putting that aside right now. Start putting that aside for your for your land grabbing, attention uh, seeking growth period during during a, a downturn, and th that's kind of where I'd focus. But most importantly, just I mean, I think a lot of business owners don't go through their numbers regularly. They don't know what's what's in the pipeline. I'd look at contracts where you're at right now. What kind of happens if if clients start wanting to pull out before the contracts early? Because I mean, someone going bust, you're not going to keep charging them. So start figuring out what that looks like for your business. And then how do you operate? And then what can you do right now to secure more cash flow coming in right now? So good. So, you know, you said something I think super powerful, um, several things actually, but one um, of the things that you're, I think you're exactly right. A lot of business owners are not looking at their numbers consistently, you know, um, like one of your easiest ways to like, you know, um, uh, 
increase your cash, uh, in, you know, is to, to look at the tools and the, the money that you're spending each and every month. It's a fascinating thing. When you've got money coming in, you don't think about all the money you're spending on things. Is that tool still necessary? Can I get rid of that tool? Um, same with people. If you have a team, if you don't have a team, it's not as big of a deal, but I would bet you you're probably, you've got expenses that you're paying month over month. Some of which are like, you know, the service provider loves you because you just pay month after month, whether or not you need it or not. So taking a look at, you know, outgoing expenditures is something we do every, every year just to like reevaluate, like, do we still need this? Are we using it? Um, and that might be helpful for some of you guys uh, just to look at what what kind of um, you know money you have outgoing. Also, and this is critical, you said this, and I see so many people doing this. We get, I say, you know, complacent um, when we have a. a a you know, we have a steady cash flow coming in. You know, we have, you know, we have six clients, we have 10 clients or whatever the number is. And, you know, we've got a contracts with them and blah, blah, blah. But newsflash, if those people are hurting for cash, they're going to, they're just going to stop paying you a contract or no, <laughs> you know, so you, you absolutely need to think about it. Like Abigail saying here, you know, uh, what happens if 80% of your clients pull out? Yeah, I had a, um, a client one time, we did a VIP day because she had, I think she ended up, she had um, 10 clients and her top six clients pulled out in a 30 day window. Um, you know, she had just done her job super well. They felt like they could go do it themselves. And there she was. So yeah, that's a, it's obviously that's um, a worst case scenario, but ha it happens. So what, what do you think, like when it comes to certain types of businesses, Jason, are there certain types of businesses that can do uh, thrive better in times of recession? Or like you mentioned, you know, like during COVID travel, it was out of their control, right? They couldn't do anything about it. But like in the online business space, are there certain businesses that are, are, are um, in your opinion, better suited for managing tough times? um versus ones that aren't i'm just curious if you what your thoughts are on that yeah uh just just to go back on, on what you said before before i answer that question because i think it's a great question um i want to make it very clear is you cannot save your way to growth so you could cut back as much expense as you want but i think the way to solve that uh, you know, every time I look through something and there's a budget, okay, we got to cut this, we got to cut this, we got to cut this. My answer always comes back to the same is if I had more customers coming in and more sales coming in, more business coming in, I would not need to cut any of those things. So I think we're looking at the wrong problem. So always address that problem first. If you're looking through your tool list and you're like, oh, man, this $35 a month tool, do we need it? It's really, uh, you know, it's like $400 a year. Do we, should we have that? $400 a year should not be bothering in your business. The bigger problem that you have to look. So I would say like, Go to the source of the problem. What is actual the problem? Because otherwise you're just putting a band-aid solution on, on, what, on what's going on. So go back to the source. The source is you're just not generating enough leads coming in and enough new clients coming in. Anytime I feel complacent in the business or I look at, so you talk about not knowing your numbers. I get sent you know, reports every single morning from my assistant, every single morning, like clockwork between 8.30 and 9 a.m. So before I even start my day, I'm looking at the reports of P&L, uh, different things in the business, we monitor everything, um, you know, because you can't fix what you don't measure. So we see all those things. Anytime I get complacent, and I'm saying, okay, percentage of growth has declined or anything like that. It's usually on me, I you have to go back and be like, okay, well, what are we going for growth here? How are we growing? Because if you get too comfortable, that's when when 80% of your customers leave you, it's a problem. But it's also why people get too hung up on they do a sales call and the sales call didn't work out. And now they're all bummed because the sales call didn't work out and they blew it and they blew the client. There's no such thing as blowing it when you have 200 people to make phone calls to next, right? So if the call failed and you, and, and you have to you know, be down about yourself, it means you just don't have a pipeline. So start looking at the real problems going on. Now, in terms of, in terms of businesses that are able to weather, look, Real estate, I think, something that goes down in 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 a uh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait! Yeah, 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 I just yeah, want to. Yeah, yeah. I just, sorry, I just. Your your show, your show, you're the boss. You, you okay? No, 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 no. I just wanted to say, oh, mg, you guys, if you didn't like really listen to what Jason just said, 
you need to go back and listen because talk about giving it to you straight. Now, boy, that was like serious, seriously straight. The, the reality truly is for most people who don't have um, and I, Lord knows I've been in this boat over and over and over again, because we get like, whether it's complacency or whatever, but your pipeline is the absolute, um, what do you, I mean, lifeblood, it's a lifeblood. You have to have new, uh, sales coming in all the, all the time. So you're right. You know, saving a little bit of money here and there isn't your problem. So, you know, really get into the root of why you're not having a level of success that you want, or, you know, you're trying to st uh, stretch to a, a higher level. It's really about bringing in more cash, you know, at the end of the day. So then what you're saving. So just wanted to like, just really hammer that home because it was so good. So much value um, in that. Okay. Now we can move on to the next question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. No, no problem. Uh, like I said, your show, you, you can interrupt. You're allowed to interrupt whenever you want. Um, so, I mean, like real estate, real estate, for example, something that goes down during recession. But, you know, if you're a real estate agent, you may not be finding a lot of people interested in, let's say, selling their house right versus when it's a high right you're trying to get that supply and demand or, or, or whatever it is but you can flip the reverse maybe there are people who are now looking to invest in real estate um i think there's always opportunities to grow i think you're starting to see a lot of commerce brands and so here was the trend so i in our agency um i would say probably around 70 percent plus of our clients are e-commerce um we saw here was the here was the trajectory of, of e-commerce over the last few years. Then COVID happened and it skyrocketed, and now it's here, and now it's here. So if you look at the line of where it was going to grow, and I, I wanted I'll, I'm going to map this of where it would grow actually and where COVID happened. So you have this, and then this, and then you have that. So everyone's like, oh, e-commerce was a bust. Uh, it, it, you know, it grew during COVID, and then everything went under. Well, there's a lot of reasons why it went under. It's not that e-commerce doesn't work anymore, but there was a course correction. Not everything's going to be a hockey stick and go straight up and your business isn't going to have months where it's just a rocket ship and just goes all the way up because then you'd be a trillion dollar company pretty fast. So it was just a correction. So we're seeing this right now of in different spaces, do people need to spend $90 on a t-shirt when they had to fill the car with gas or pay $8 for tomatoes? These are real life problems that people are having and people need to focus in. That being said, People are still buying. So you could get all down or you could understand that, you know, this is what's going on. This is how it works. You could market the hell out of anything you want. But if you are selling $90 t-shirts and we're in a recession, people don't have money to pay for groceries and inflation's kicking in and all these problems are happening. You have to understand that you have to live outside of a bubble of your business as well. And I think a lot of business owners live in their bubble and be like, no, the, you know, we're, we're, we're declining year over year, year over year, year over year for the last three years has been, you know, incredibly hard to look at because you look at 2020 compared to 2019, you had this giant boom, COVID boom, right? Every, every online business did well. You had this COVID boom. Then 2021 compared to 2020, you had a little bit of a correction because iOS issues happen. Right. So it's it's down a little bit. Then 2022, you have a recession, inflation and post covid where things are going opening up and people aren't online as much anymore. Well, now you're looking at that compared to everything else, plus the rising cost of advertising. So it's not really a fair comparison. So you have to make sure that you're always looking at apples to apples when, when looking at things. So the biggest mistake I see business owners make is that they live inside their own bubble and they don't realize that there's a macro uh, world issues that go on a war happens guess what if, if someone invaded the united states of america people aren't buying your t-shirts and it's not going to be because you're marketing or your facebook ads or algorithms or anything like that so number one get out of that and also understand what's going on in the world and then how do you then market towards those people what can you possibly do can you you know people added buy now pay later uh services which now don't get me started is going to be a giant uh, default on, on on those things but what can you do? How can you get your existing customers back? What are you doing to improvise? What are you doing to get out there? And some businesses, no, it's going to be harder. That being said, the recessions usually only impact middle and lower class, upper class, you know, top 1%. They don't really get hit by recessions. Uh, they go out and buy and buy still. So I would look at that and sit there and say, well, 
doesn't mean my marketing has to be ROI driven right now. But if I can land grab and build up those audiences lists for cheap for a lot cheaper but understand there's going to be impact to sales a little bit but how can i start driving more people into my pipeline more people and more people in, and then being able to sell them that's how you have to kind of look at it doesn't mean every single business that you know goes out of markets during a recession is going to boom i do think i do think there are some businesses that are that are better prepared but i think every business has a chance to thrive during a recession i i mean i i don't know of an, of, i mean it's very hard. I, I think I think people like to think their business is different. I think that's one of the biggest mindsets I see a lot of business owners make is that no, my business is different, and the new nuances may be different. Um, the same ways to grow apply to every single business. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. One of the things that I see so frequently um, is just the fear of you know not having enough or not doing you know it. it to your point they pull back, you know, and you said it best, you can't save your way to growth. Uh, and I think that's probably even more powerful in, um, in tough times because that's our first instinct. It's kind of like, you know, when you're in a vehicle and you, you know, it's, it's snowy outside and, uh, you know, you start to slide, your first instinct is to put on the brakes, which really is the worst thing that you can do. Right. So it's kind of like that. It's like, you know, um, you know, our first instinct is to say, okay, well, let me just hoard my cash instead of getting out there. And like Jason says, land grab, you know, get use, uh, use your, your cash to get more people into your pipeline, um, et cetera. Let me ask this question because I saw this so, and it was so powerful and um, and so evident in so many businesses I, in in COVID times. Um, and you mentioned it. Uh, you mentioned like bolt ons and things like that. Uh, you know, I whether it's a pivot, meaning you change your business model slightly, or um, or I guess technically you could look at it through the same lens. A pivot could also be a bolt on, meaning, you know, adding something else to the mix that you think your clients would want your existing clients or potentially past clients. So what, what is your thoughts on that? Like, is that something you should like, you know, Hey, getting outside the bubble of your, you know, your business and saying, okay, let's look at this. This is what's happening in the world. What could I bolt on or do I need to pivot my business? feel free to like jump into that. Cause I feel like there's a powerful um, story message behind it. Yeah. I, I, th I think, I think the number one thing you can invest in first is, is yourself and, 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 and your business before you start diversifying and doing a lot of different things. That being said, I'm slowly starting to change my tune a little bit on the, you know, one business go all in, then, then slowly start to diversify a little bit uh, because the odds of you going all in on one business and making it, let's be honest, nine out of 10 businesses fail. Let's, let's have a realistic conversation of what's going on in the world. It's not that easy. You know, very few businesses hit seven figures. Um, the average, I think, I, I think I was just talking to my friend Cody Sanchez and she was telling me that she, she gave me a stat that the average entrepreneur makes $46,000 a year, which is, um, less than they would make if they were an employee somewhere else with a whole lot less stress of what's going on. So understanding the realities of what's going on. I, I'm, I'm a no BS person. I, I, I don't sugarcoat things. I think we need to have the only way to grow is to understand what exactly is in front of us, right? So pretending the world is, is perfect and looking at it through rose colored lenses doesn't help any business. So I want to make sure we understand the landscape before we move forward. So that being said, I have an agency, the bolster on service we did to create operational leverage instead of operational drag because I could grow the agency more, but then I create more operational drag because I have to bring on more team members, I have to deal more with HR, I have to do a lot of different things. Or I could use my operational leverage, which is, okay, I've helped other people build their businesses. I've built multiple seven-figure businesses. I've helped other people scale way past that. All right, my method kind of works. How do I create that operational leverage? And that's why I launched a coaching program on how to do it because that's taking my knowledge expertise, doesn't take up a lot more time, doesn't create operational drag, but instead that has more scale. I can't bring on 400 
agency clients, but I could bring on 400 coaching clients, like in group, in a group coaching, I, I could segment that. I could do that a lot differently. It's a lot harder for me to bring on a hundred, 400, maybe high to do from, for a coaching standpoint, but 50, a hundred, very hard for me to bring on 50 clients tomorrow, a lot easier for me to bring on 50 clients. So what parts of your business can you leverage doing it that way? So I think a lot of people look at their business and don't realize those hidden pro this hidden, you know, pockets of where they can make money leads that didn't pan out. Maybe they weren't qualified to work with you, but maybe you know someone else that they're qualified to work with. So a lot of people, when they what they do with a lead when it's unqualified is they just let it go. And you pay to acquire that lead. So it's, that's just you throwing money down the garbage. But what if there was a way to monetize your list? What if every unqualified lead potentially could work with someone else? What if, you know, my leads don't work for me, but it works for someone like Kim, for example. I said, Kim, you know, you don't deal with nine figure businesses, but you deal with five figure businesses. I've been getting a lot of leads that are five figure businesses. I can refer them to you. What kind of deal can we make together? And you may sit there and say, Hey, Jason, I'll pay you a hundred dollars a lead. Or you may sit there and say, Hey, I'll give you, you know, $2,000 for every lead that we close. And now you do these joint, these joint ventures and these, and these partnerships. So start looking at things like that. What's in your business, your, 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 your knowledge. I'm sure anyone listening who's been running a business has something that they've been doing for a long period of time that I guarantee you someone who's just starting off or lower than you would pay you money to get there faster, to get your knowledge and, and go there faster, to understand the blueprint to get there faster. That's a bull surround service that doesn't require a lot of different things. You know, that's very different than, hey, I'm selling t-shirts, maybe I sell pants and, and something like that. Cause now you're bringing on operational drag, you're bringing on inventory, you're bringing on a lot of different things. So uh, the quickest and easiest way to grow is joint ventures. Like I just said, is find someone who's in your space who maybe not be selling, maybe you want to bolster on the pants if you're selling t-shirts, but instead of you taking on the inventory, you find someone else who sells only pants, but doesn't sell t-shirts. And you sit there and make a deal with them saying, okay, cool. I only sell t-shirts. You only sell pants. I have a list of 4,000 customers. You have a list of 4,000 customers. What can we do together? How can we monetize each other's list? And how do we do business together? So that's the way I would look at bolstering on services versus just, or bolstering on something. And that's not pivoting. Right. I left a clothing business because I was truly unhappy. I was miserable. But if I break it down, I probably quit a bit too early. I was probably, you know, I, I, I was very I was young, stupid. I didn't know you know, all these things I'm talking about right now to you. I learned the hard way. If I had this knowledge when I started the clothing, the clothing business or was going through these things, I probably would have thought a little bit differently. But, you know, I, I was, uh, you know, pull the trigger quick quick to pull the trigger and then ask questions later type of person. And now I'm a little bit more methodical because I understand businesses just from auditing so many and, and, and growing to and growing a couple of my own. Um, but not everyone has to just jump out. I don't want you to look at this and like, I, I, I love what I do, but God knows not every day do I wake up happy and be like, this is the most amazing moment of my life. Right? So have that hard look. If you're truly miserable, then figure out how you can pivot because now would be the right time. You're going to, you're going to, you, you don't want to go down with the ship. So figure out what you could do then. If you love what you're doing and you're like, okay, well, how do I pivot a little bit? How do I go with it? I just, I think I just gave a bunch of different ways that you could kind of um, play with. I love that. One thing too, that Jason mentioned earlier, and I think it's super powerful in the context of what he just talked about. Um, you know, we have to look at what is happening, not only in our businesses, but in other, you know, if we're, if we're serving another business owner as a service provider, for example, you know, they may be reluctant to hire you to do whatever you've been doing, but to his point, they know you have knowledge and they'd be willing to pay you for that knowledge, you know, to teach them because, and it might be a cheaper, like, you know, outlay for them. So they'd be more willing to spend that money to learn you know, technically how to do it uh, for themselves. So, you know, you just have to think outside the box, I think sometimes in the context of what's happening uh, with my existing clients or past clients that you haven't been able to monetize. Um, and then, you know, thinking about it, like what kind of, um, I love your suggestion about looking at um, that lead as that's not perfect for my business, but who, who could I send them to? and, you know, be able to monetize in some capacity. So um, just so many amazing opportunities. You know, there were so many interesting pivots that I saw during uh, um, COVID times uh, where, you know, people just got, they kind of got creative, you know, and they came up with some, uh, you know, unique ways to monetize. So it's pretty, pretty powerful. Um, so 
what lessons should any business owner learn to be always prepared? Like, you know, we talked about, we've talked about some, a variety of things, but like worst case scenarios, you know, you talked about cash flow. Um, what is obviously that being a huge piece of the pie, but are there other things like just as a baseline, like what are the core things? Like just if, kind of, let's just sum up everything we've talked about. Basically, what are the core things that people need to be aware of? to put that plan into place or at least start looking at um, for, you know, recession proof in their business. Yeah. Uh, know your numbers. Number one is, is all right. How much money do you have? Um, also a free cash flow versus regular cash flow. Um, I'd also look at, uh, make sure you understand the numbers of lifetime value of a customer. So that will allow you to spend more to acquire a customer. So lifetime value, for example, is if you spent, you know, $500 to acquire a customer that gave you $250, sounds like you lost money. But if they come back and buy from you throughout a year, you know, five, uh, five more or four more times, guess what? That's $1,000. That customer is worth $1,000. So you spent $500 to acquire $1,000. Now that's a 2x return on your investment. So that's $1 spent to make $2, which is a pretty solid return. So that's the game. You kind of have to play with yourself a little bit. Um, understanding your repeat customer rate. How often do they come back and buy from you again? Uh, and then just making sure you understand there's only five ways for you to, to grow your business. And I call like, this is what I call the market domination method is if you understand these five levers that you could pull. So one is awareness. Two is out of the people that, that now know who you are, how many of them are interested in what you have to say, that's lead generation. Then what percent of those people who are interested convert? So what's your conversion rate? Then you have your price. What's your price? Um, and then, or in e-commerce or online, we call it the average order value or the average cart value. Um, and then your buying frequency, which is what I said, the repeat customer rate. Those are five areas that, that levers you can pull at any time. And the beauty is if you doubled every single one of those levers, you don't just double your business. It's actually a 32 X multiple. So if you look at it, it has that compounding effect because every single one of those things compounds off the other. Uh, so you actually grow your business 32 X if you double it. Now, you're not going to go double your pricing. So let's be realistic a little bit, but you can get 10% better in, all, in, in, in some areas and 30% better in another. And that just plays with the power of compounding. Um, so understanding that, like, you know, when I got interested in finance, it was all about compounding interest, right? Um, Einstein called it the eighth wonder of the world. Uh, you know, Warren Buffett says he owes his wealth to it. It's really just, you know, if you have something that just doubles every single day, it takes time over the first 30 days, you don't really see it. But past 30 days, that's when you see monumental growth. The same thing with your business. You don't have to go all in on one area. How can you get incrementally better in different areas? And I think a perfect time is when you're building that, that, that bulletproof plan. If you're building that recession proof plan, looking at those areas, those five different levers and being like, okay, cool. What can we do to get incrementally better? Look at those numbers. How many people are you getting in front of? That's awareness. What percentage of those people are, are, are becoming leads? That's lead generation, then what percentage of those people convert? That's your conversion rate. What are we charging these people on, on average? That's your price. And then how many times do they buy from us over the course of a year? That's your buying frequency. Now you can sit there and say, I can't get in front of any more people. I can't do anything. Maybe you get them to buy one more time from you and then play that role in your math. Cause if you get, just get 10% better in every single one of those levers, you actually double your business. So just knowing that and realizing that it's not a um, all in approach that no, there's one solution that's that's going to solve it. Uh, there's one thing that you're going to go all in. It's really uh, look at your business, do a full diagnostic on it, do a full audit on it and, and, and be honest with yourself and be like, okay, here's where we can improve. And then now start looking at the different ways that you could prove it. And I would venture to guess most businesses could improve every single one of those levers, but most people don't do enough on the awareness side. Mm, so good. So when you're talking awareness, it's like community building, audience building, uh, getting out in front of the right kinds of people so that they are attracted to whatever your content message is. Well, it, 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 it's it's the, the rule of thumb is if, if people don't know you exist, they can't do business with you. And if people forget you exist, they can't continue to do business with you. So marketing is always part of the cycle. It can never be erased. And that's why when people remove it during a recession, their whole business falls apart because now the well dries up. Mm. 
So good. So good. Um, so we've talked about things uh, that we can do to recession proof, but like, what are things we should not do in a recession? Uh, we'll kind of, you know, what, what are that like, absolutely do not do these things or you are going to die a slow death. <laughs> I, I, I think it depends on, on what your goals are. If your goal is expansion, if your goal is, okay, uh, you know, I'm going to take advantage of this because I watched people really monumentally grow their business in 2008. And I want a piece of that. I want to build my wealth right now. Um, and, and, and land grab, then you got to sacrifice your personal spending, right? So you got to, you got to make sure that you're, you're trimming the fat. It's it, you're taking the step backwards to go forward. So, um, I, I think I think there's not there's not much to really do except look at yourself, look where you're spending, and understand your goal. Number one is have a goal. I think most businesses don't have a goal of what they want to achieve and what they want to do. So plan it out. All right. If if this goes to this, this is where I want to go. Here's the plan of attack. How we get to here if this happens. Now if it happens, why are I mean why are athletes so good at what they do? Um, or why do you see, uh, let's look at football, for example, they run routes, that route is practiced over and over and over. The quarterback knows that all he has to do is come out of the pocket and throw the ball to this area. And it's going to go and everyone looks so good doing it. Why? Because they practiced it over and over. And it was a plan. A playbook is a plan, right? So they have the playbook. If this guy, if this guy, you know, inches up a little bit more, guess what? We know what happens if that happens. I, you know, you're, you play baseball. I play baseball. If you pitch, the first thing you say is, okay, the ball comes back to me. Where am I going? Does everyone know what happens if the ball's hit to you? Where are you going? So the ball's hit to you. Where do you go? Okay, you're going to go to second. Okay, who's going to cover second? All right. We know all these things so that when it happens, you're not surprised and you don't make mental mistakes and you don't make the mistakes that you should make. So it's just being prepared. I think it's looking at your business honestly. Um, the monumental things not to do is is just – be lavish with what you're doing and, and be complacent where you are right now and and think that you could um that you're that you're just going to weather any single storm um you know if that's your goal if your goal is just hey in five years from now i just hope i'm like alive and and, and doing my business is alive and, and doing okay then maybe you could you could kind of weather it if your goal is like hey i really want to build this business or i really want to create that that wealth for myself and my family and whatnot then you need a plan of attack to get there because you just sitting there saying, okay, the market just collapsed. What do I do? Well, then you just freeze. You have analysis paralysis. There's so many different options you could do because you don't have that playbook in place. So good. So good. I, you know, one of the things um, that to your point, I agree a hundred percent with girl, everything you said, but the biggest problem um, that a lot of people uh, have that I notice quite frequently is there is no goal. You know, um, they don't know where they're going. It's like getting in the car and saying, you're going, you know, to the beach. You just head South. Like, okay. Well, it's, it's, like it's, it's, it's a famous Alice in Wonderland, right? When, when, right. when Alice, that's one of my favorite lines from, from any, from any book is where Alice asked the cat, you know, wh where the direction is. And the cat says, depends which way you want to go. And she goes, I, it doesn't matter. She goes, well, then it doesn't matter which direction you choose. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Like if you, if you don't know where you want to go, any direction is a direction. If yeah. you know it, but you got to kind of you know. know honestly too you know um what i i think and i will kind of wrap this up right before we choose our winners but um one of the the opportunities there is opportunity in um recession you just have to decide i really i think the biggest thing you are am i going to like step into this as an opportunity or am i going to weather the storm you know, and if you're going to weather the storm, well, just understand that there's risk there too. There's risk either way. Let's just be honest. I mean, truly, there's risk either way. But um, I feel like the the bigger risk uh, is is not doing anything. Let's you know, be honest. Let's be honest. If you're listening to this and and you're an entrepreneur, you signed up for this. Amen, there are brother. there are times there are yeah. times every day where I like I mean at least once a day where I wake up and I think and I think maybe I'm better off working for someone else because like I, my friends, I, I was talking about this the other day. I have friends who sit there and say, Oh, you live the good life. And I'm like, let me ask you a question. Friday, 4 PM. What do you do? He goes, Oh, I leave work. I go, when's the next time you think of work? They're like, Oh, Sunday night before I go to bed that, that, you know, that I have to go back to work on Monday. I'm like, okay, now imagine that thought, not that you have to go back to work, but now Monday, what do you do? He goes, Monday, I think about work, you know, from, 
from nine to five and then like cash out on with the family. I'm like, remember that nine to five moment where you're thinking about work? Now imagine that every single day, at every moment of the day, 24 seven, you go to bed, your mind's still racing about work. That's what I do. So it sounds like you have a pretty good life too. So yeah. I, I do think not many people are like, I, I think entrepreneurship has been glamorized. It's been, it's been, you know, uh, rock star status. But I do think there are many people that are better off suited to be, you know, third, fifth, even 100th in a company for their own mental happiness um, than, than go to start a business. So there's risk either way. 100% I agree with you. But if you became an entrepreneur and you're really and this is really what it's in your DNA and it's really what you what you want. Well, the risk shouldn't scare you. This is this is exactly the role you, you signed up for this roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly. I mean, there to your point, there's I don't I, I think if any entrepreneur that's truly an entrepreneur tells you that there hasn't been days they want to throw in the towel, then they are lying <laughs> to you because <laughs> there is days. Right. There is absolutely days. I mean, I've been at this 31 years, golly. And um, and some days I'm like, I just like not to stress over all this stuff, you know, paying the team and, you know, making sure you got all the stuff and, you know, doing the next thing. And, you know, the, the weight of it sometimes is crazy. But to your point, um, we signed up for this. And, you know, there is the 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 uh, the ugly side of it, if you call it that. Usually the amazing side of it uh, outweighs the ugly. That's why we keep after it. That's why we keep waking up every day and we chase the the next thing. So it is what it is. But um, we're gonna we're gonna announce the winners here in just a second. But before we do that, this is super power uh, super important. Um, I want to make sure that everybody knows where they can connect with you, Jason. So where would you like people to like send I'm, you a message or whatever? Where uh, where would be the best place? I'm super accessible across all social media platforms at Jason Portnoy. Um, you know, that, that, that's me. You can connect with me on Instagram, TikTok. I have my YouTube channel, or if you, you or if you want to pick a channel, you can go to jportnoy.com, uh, J P O R T N O Y.com. And that's my website and it has every different way you can reach me there. That's awesome. All right. Excellent. Um, well, we are, um, I think uh, I've got, Waiting on the, uh, the, 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 the the winners to be announced. Um, Rhonda is in an airport somewhere today, so um, <laughs> we have uh, we have another team member managing the back <laughs> of the show. So here we go, though we have our winners. So guys, we have Abigail and Cheryl won the How to Hire Your First Team Member course. Even if you have no clue how to get started. So yay, uh, go over to kimgorse.com forward slash winner. Give us all of your details. We'll get you a login and you will be set up and ready to roll. Um, so I just want to say thank you, uh, one, Jason, for being here and sharing your amazingness with us. I, you know, I said it on the front side where, you know, people didn't get a, get a chance to see your wicked sense of humor so much, but boy, did they get to see. Well, we were talking, we were talking about serious things. Now. Yes, I know. But yeah. man, I, I, that's one of the things I think of when I uh, think of you is, uh, you know, your sense of humor. But the thing that I really wanted to key in on is you are right. You pull no punches, you know, you just tell it like it is. And um, I really, really appreciated that. I think people need to hear, hear it uh, like it is, not like the rosy side of, you know, of uh, entrepreneurship sometimes. So that was gets me, gets me, gets me in trouble, helps me, but also gets me in trouble. No, you know, I've often said, you know, I learned this when my husband was in the military, you know, he always worked with, um, he was always in special ops and the guys were brutal with one another. You know, they were just, I, they stabbed each other in the front kind of thing, you know, yeah. and I was like, always give it to me straight. Like I would much rather have, you know, a knife to the chest than one in the back kind of thing, you know? <laughs> I, I, I agree. I, I try to treat people the way, you know, I want, I wanted help, you know, with, with, with my businesses. And I don't want people trying to pretend that things were great. And then I go into it and it doesn't work. I want people to tell me where my holes are, where my mistakes are. You need thick skin and you need, and, and it's out of love, right? I, I like helping yeah. businesses. You like helping businesses grow. You're great at what you do. So thank you for having me, but also thank you for everything you've done uh, and continue uh -huh. to do for, for this space because you're a rock star. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And um, 
I just want to share real quick too. all of you guys that are live with us and, you know, watching on the replay or listening later. Um, we appreciate you guys. I mean, you know, that's one of the things Jason said, you know, you, if you can't attract people to you, it's like, you know, they does, does, uh, what's that old saying, you know, if it, uh, a bear or pooties in the woods, did it really happen or, you know, kind of, whatever it is or a tree fall. I don't know. But the point is, it was a bad analogy. But the point is that uh, <laughs> that it, without you guys, you know, we would just be sitting here having a conversation. So appreciate you so much for being here and spending time with us. We know that your time's valuable and it's your most precious commodity. And the fact that you spent some with us, we do um, appreciate you for it. So you guys have a great rest of your week. Uh, we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Jason, thank you so much. All right, guys, have a great one. Take care of yourself. Stay safe and God bless.